So I was developing my bot the other day, you know, the, the, the chat bot, uh, the Twitch chat bot that moderates my Twitch streams. It's written in Haskell, by the way. And I was implementing a filter to filter out uh, different uh, Twitch ASCII spams. You, you know, on Twitch, uh, it's quite popular to spam some ASCII art in the chat. So I was trying to implement some kind of filter for that. What I needed to do, I needed to have some kind of a function that takes a character and answers me whether a character is forbidden or not because ASCII art uses a very small subset of Unicode characters my approach was to just go and uh, forbid those particular characters not really forbidding them uh, so my idea was to actually count them and if there are more than a particular threshold of forbidden characters uh, that message will be removed from the chat so something like that so I need a function that will tell me whether a particular character is forbidden or not uh, so let's actually call it is forbidden so how I would implement it so for example one of the most popular characters Characters for ASCII art on Twitch chat is Braille font. So I would have a predicate uh, specifically for Braille fonts, right? And it would do something like is Braille X. Another thing is probably emoji, right? I want to actually forbid emoji. And what do I do? I would construct a condition that forbidden character is either Braille character or emoji character and so on and so forth. You get the idea. So, but here's the problem. That looks like something an average JavaScript programmer would write. And it's extremely lame. And since since we're an epic Haskell developers, I think we can do better than that. What I essentially want to have, I want to have a list of predicates, right? A list of predicates, and I'm going to put all of my predicates there. And I want to have some kind of way to take a list of predicates and fold them into a single predicate, uh, into a single chart boolean predicate that will sequentially check each individual predicate and do disjunction between them. Something like that. That would be actually pretty epic in my opinion. So, and then in the future, it will be a little bit more maintainable because I'll be able to add more predicates. For example, is lower, which is located in data character. Of course, it's kind of stupid to um, forbid uh, lower case his characters but you know it's just for for demonstration for the sake of demonstration because is braille and is forbidden are not implemented so how can we fold them together well we can come up with some kind of operation that takes one predicate another predicate and merges them into a single predicate if we had such operation, that would be actually pretty cool. And you know what's interesting is that this is just a binary operation that operates on the same type. And you know what has a binary operation that operates on the same type? Monoids. Let's take a look at the definition of monoid. Monoid is an interface that has two important things an empty element, so-called neutral element, and binary operation that is called mapend in Haskell for some reason, I don't know why. And it looks exactly like our operation. See, it actually takes two arguments of the same time and produces the argument of the same time, just like in our case. In our case, the type is called from character to boolean. See, it's the same type, so it's basically mapend for functions. And the question is, uh, is this function a monoid? That's a very interesting question. What's interesting about Haskell is that this arrow operator is actually type. Yes, it's a separate type by itself. It's a type that is parameterized by two types, input and output. It's very similar to maybe. Maybe is a type that parameterized by another type, basically the type inside of maybe. And the same is for arrow, but it's parameterized by two types. So arrow is a two type champion. So, and that means we can check, we can inspect that type just like that. And you see, it says that function is a monoid only if the result type is a monoid as well. Very interesting. So a function like that can be actually monoid and we can use mapend to merge them together. But is boolean a monoid? Welp, it is not, unfortunately. So there's pretty much nothing we can do about it. But wait a second, boolean is a monoid, like theoretically, because there is binary operation that combines two booleans together, right? So why boolean is not a monoid. The situation with boolean is exactly the same as with integers. You can define several monoids on boolean. With disjunction, you can define a disjunction monoid. And for example, with conjunction, you can define a conjunction monoid. So when you uh, want to say that boolean is a monoid, which monoid do you mean? There are several monoids on boolean and you have to specify which one you mean. In standard library of Haskell, specifically in data monoid, there are two interesting types. The first one is called any 
mean? You see, it encapsulates a boolean, it basically wraps a boolean and it implements a monoid interface. And what this thing does, it implements a disjunction monoid on boolean. There's also conjunction monoid, which is all. You see, it also encapsulates a boolean and it's also a monoid. So yeah, we can use these two wrappers to turn boolean into monoid, just like that. So let's take a look at how we can do that. Uh, imagine that we have is lower operator, which is a character from Boolean. How can we turn this entire function into monoid? Well, we can compose that thing with any, and here you go, we get a function that takes a character and instead of Boolean, it returns any. Now, what if we take another predicate, for example, is digit, and also turn it into monoid? And since these two things are monoids by the definition, uh, we can map them together. And that gives us a new predicate from character to any. And what we can do with that predicate, we can uh, check some particular characters. For, the, for example, capitalized is going to be false because it's neither lower nor digit. But for lower case, it's going to be true. And for digits, it's also going to be true. So yeah, but mapend is a binary operation. So it works only with two arguments. But what we want to have instead of that is a list of predicates. And we want to be able to just fold them together. And you know what? You know what's interesting? In standard Haskell library, specifically in data foldable, there's a very interesting operation, which is called exactly fold. So you see T is foldable and M is monoid. It takes foldable of monoids and returns a monoid. So it takes some kind of a foldable container full of monoids and just folds them together. So, and what's important is that list is also foldable. It's also foldable, so that means fold specifically can take list of monoids because list is foldable. Well, that means we can take a list of different predicates and just fold them together. And that creates a pretty extendable code because we can easily add more predicates and it just folds them together using this junction monoid. But it's kind of rather inconvenient because you also have to prepend all of them with any, but you know, uh, since we're Epic Haskell developers, we know how to resolve that. We can clearly see that this is a mapping operation. It's just a mapping operation. So we can just do map composition with any, and we don't have to do that manually anymore. You see, it just works. You know what is even more interesting? The fact that fold and map, the combination of fold and map is so common that standard Haskell library has a fold map operation, which basically does all of that for you. So you can easily replace this with that and it's still going to work. And on top of that, if you don't want to uh, combine predicates on disjunction, you can combine them on conjunction. Simple as that. So you just switch the monoid and you merge them with a completely different operation now. But we're going to work with any now. This should be pretty much the implementation of the is forbidden function. Right. But unfortunately, it is not going to work because this produced a function from character to any, but we expect from character to boolean. Well, that is not that big of a problem, because if you take a look at the definition of any, it's a record with a field called get any. So that means if you wrap a boolean with any, you can get it back by using get any function. So what that means, that means we just have to compose this entire operation with get any and that will just work. So obviously is Braille and is forbidden are not implemented. So let's remove them for now. We're going to use is lower and is digit for demonstration. And let's see how it works. Let's check if whether an uppercase is forbidden. It is not forbidden. Let's check if lowercase is forbidden. It's forbidden. And digits is also forbidden. And at any case, I can quite easily just add another predicate and it will just compile and it will just work. Now, that's what I call an epic Haskell developer move. <laughs>